rassemblement sur le portail racial. On va pas se terminer longtemps parce qu'on va laisser la parole aux gens qui sont victimes de portail racial. Nous avons euh, quelqu'un qui va venir euh, euh, nous parler de son expérience. Euh, et, euh, de, il a été victime de profilage et euh, d'histoire qui remonte à 90 euh, avec le SPDF. Donc, j'inviterai, il va parler en anglais, donc euh, il parlera pour tout le monde. Euh, j'inviterai donc euh, euh, James Oscar à venir nous rejoindre ici. Euh. Bonjour, bonjour. Hi there, um, my name is James Oscar and uh, thank you for being here. The reason I'm here today is because um, my history with uh, police profiling actually goes back to 1968. My uh, uncle was murdered by the police in Trinidad in 1968 for no reason at all. My family was then led into exile here in Montreal. My story continues because I lived in NDG in the 1980s and I witnessed the aftermath of perhaps one of the most, you know, uh, well-known shootings that, that, that came to public attention, and that is the shooting of Anthony Griffin. The thing about the shooting of Anthony Griffin is that I was actually a newspaper boy at the same station where he was shot. I was there the day he was shot. I thought that was the end. But it continued. My history continued from 1968 to 1987 to 1990. My uncle was murdered by the police on December 24th, 1968. On December 24th, 1990, I was walking on Summerled Boulevard in Montreal, Canada, minding my business with a bomber jacket, which my mother said looked a little bit gangster, but I wore it anyway. I wore that jacket. I lived with the fear after Anthony Griffin's death of this always happening to me, and it came true. I was thrown up against a window by the police and accused of armed robbery. I was brought to the same station where I was a newspaper boy up until three years before. This is a history of a whole. This is a story of a whole and of man and woman's greatest fall from the common link. This is a hole we keep falling further and further down into with disgrace. We all at times look down in shame at this ground and this hole which further and further opens. Many of us, man and woman, woman and man, are not brave enough to jump into this hole, this hole which breaks the union of our civilization. We often look at the gaping chasm, odd, disillusioned, and we try to find ways to patch the hole while only some of us decide to report and speak about this hole. The hole widens, the illusion grows, the masses yawn, and many begin to also not see a hole, not even seeing the patch up that is covering the hole. The break of the union leaves that hole. The hole is there for time immemorial. And more often than not, people walk right near to the hole. They walk right next to the hole, forgetting that this is a patch hiding history, that this patch hides a history of a break it's a history of man and woman's refusal to accord history. It is a patch that hides woman and man's proper reflection. Many come to memorialize the whole. Some pay tribute to the whole, but others keep continue to walk by the whole. This is the story of the whole. One looks at the growing machinery that the nation puts in place. It is a machinery of indoctrination, 
It is a machinery of revisionism. It is a machinery of a nation that comes to placate and protect the lie of the whole at all costs. There are several groups that walk by the whole. The first group comes to look at the whole and memorialize the whole. This group looks and pays tribute to the whole and the break of our civilization. But this memorial and this memorialization of the whole is subdued and quiet, even though it has some beautiful convictions. The other group does not even see the whole. Others do not even see such tributes. Others decide the tributes to the whole created in the fabric of their civilization must be greater, must be louder, must be more pronounced. This is the group that we have to join. We have to join the group that speaks louder, more pronounced, and believes more in the fight to stop the daily war of souls. These are the beautiful ones. The point of all this is that to be silent is a luxury of privilege. I have been silent since 1990. And I know now that to be silent is a luxury of privilege. Please become one of the beautiful ones. Speak openly to all people in all walks of your life about this whole at the heart of our civilization. Those who stop the daily war of souls and speak about this whole are the beautiful ones. Thank you.